Welcome to our short webinette on quality management and manufacturing ERP on the Salesforce platform. Let's get started. What we'd like to do now is walk you through an example uh, of a specific use case for how quality management and ERP work together as one. Uh, in this particular case, what we're going to do today is we're going to receive something in, we're going to buy something, we're going to receive it in, we're going to run it through an inspection process, and then if it passes that process, that now becomes inventory that's available to be sold and shipped out the door. So it's fairly, it's a very specific use case, but it's obviously very something that's very common uh, in industry. I'm David Burton. I'm a senior solution architect with Rootstock, and I'll start it off today. What you see here is a, a homepage with a lot of different information on it. But if we go down here to the bottom, we'll see we have a purchase order down here. So I'm going to bring that purchase order up. And this is the purchase order that we'll be transacting against to start our demonstration today. So you see we're buying this blood glucose monitor here. Uh, we got a purchase order out there for 50 of those. Looks like we've received 22 in. You can see down here the, the history of all the receipts against that particular purchase order. You can see down here the approval history of what it went through as part of a workflow process. Everything we're keeping digitally uh, so that we don't have to generate paper, pass paper around. That even goes to how we transact this out to our vendor. So if I come in here, I'm going to show you a, a facsimile of what that purchase order would look like. This might be a PDF that we send out to the vendor via email as an attachment. This could be something that we EDI transmit out to the vendor. This might be something that we post on uh, what we call a community, and that's, that becomes a location where the vendor can log in and then pick up that transaction from there. So that's, that's really the process of how we get that purchase order created, generated, approved, and then out into the hands of the vendor. And what I want to do is I want to go through and I want to introduce now my mobile application because what we're going to do now is let's say some of that product is, is being delivered. By the, uh, by the vendor. So I'm gonna bring my mobile app in here where we can see that on the screen. So let's say for discussion purposes now, uh, we're gonna go in and we're gonna do a PO receipt. And now I've received five units against that particular purchase order. So I've got a document here, you're gonna see it in just a second. But when I come in, the first thing it's gonna ask me is, it's gonna say, well, what is the item you're gonna receive? Now if you look here on my screen, I have the ability I can go in and I can read a barcode. I could put, I could type in characters here. I could come over and I can read in this next block right here. I can actually read character strings. Let's work with a barcode. So I'm going to come in here and you see that the uh, camera just read that barcode and now it'll bring that in. So it selected my product. I'm going to walk that transaction on through. Now I've got a couple of purchase orders out there. We're going to use this one that ends in 66. And so we're going to select that particular purchase order for that particular item. Let's receive five of those in on this particular transaction. Now it's going to ask me for what's my packing slip number. So let's come back in here and we'll use our barcode reader. And there is our packing slip. And we'll come on down here. It's going to ask us what the lot number is. So to get that increased accuracy, we're going to use that barcode reader again. So now it's captured that information for me. It's captured my lot number. It's captured my stock number. And it's it, uh, essentially now at this point, we need to tell it, and this could be barcoded as well, but what's the expiration date on that particular lot? So we're, we're going to say it's December 22nd. Now, the next thing we can do is you might say, hey, I'd like to make a copy of that uh, receiving document and include that as an attachment to the transaction. So I can certainly come in here. I can say upload file. I can say take a video or a picture. In this particular case, now you're looking through the camera in my office, and I'm going to make a picture of that packing slip. And now I'm going, that's going to be attached to that particular receipt transaction. So I'll say next. And now at that point, those five units have gone into inspection. So when this transaction completes, 
Now those units are in inspection. They're not available to be transacted right now because how we've defined our process is we need to go through and do an inspection on those units before they're good and available inventory to be shipped. So Lou, at this point, I'm gonna hand off to you to walk us through where we go from, from here. Hi, my name is Lou Sanator with Compliance Quest. And uh, I just want to reiterate our appreciation for being a part of this and having the opportunity to demonstrate to everyone. So as David walked us through, we have a customer order for a blood glucose monitor and um, are awaiting shipment from the vendor so that we can fulfill that order. And so once we get the shipment, this is gonna generate a receipt transaction and a material receipt transaction in our system. So I think we already have that. And um, let's take a look at how we find those things. So a quality control person is gonna log into the system and uh, land on a dashboard just like this. And so here we have just a list view of those incoming receipts, and you can filter these any which way that you want. Um, so here we have that receipt transaction with uh, the correct lot number, the accept location, lot quantity that we're expecting, and then the total order quantity here. So let's dive into this record right now and uh, take a look at what we have. So this is all being carried over virtually from Rootstock. So they're passing over to us the lot number, the order quantity, the sample size, um, all of these different parameters, purchase order number, and um, whether or not this needs an inspection. So if we scroll to the bottom of the screen over here, we have this needs inspection, which auto creates the inspection in our system. Um, so if Rootstock didn't pass that information over, um, and that was our decision to make, certainly we could have the QC person um, check the box and initiate the inspection order. So I did also mention the material transaction. So I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later. Um, this is more focused on specifically the material and uh, what's happening to that material over its time. So let's dive into the inspection. So we have this inspection order right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, click this open. And so we have five total items that need to be inspected. So the process that I'm gonna go through right now is basically gonna be repeated five times for each of those since this is a final inspection. Um, making sure that uh, each of these items are um, up to quality standards and ready for shipment to the customer. So a couple things that we have here. Um, so once the inspection is created, um, it's gonna generate these inspection details. So the inspection details are essentially a checklist. Um, and these are gonna be things like uh, measuring uh, size, weight, uh, tensile strength, uh, so forth and so on. And this is all gonna be related to the specific product that has been selected here. We also have some information over here that's gonna be important. So we again have our material transaction that's been carried over and we have our lot number. So let's take a look now at the material transaction before we actually complete this inspection. So once we open up the material transaction, again, it's gonna look very similar to that receipt record, but it's very specific to just the material. And you can see that we're in this status called inspection created. And hopefully if all goes well, the inspection will pass and the system will update this once we apply an electronic signature. If we come back out here, we can take a look at the lot. These two things are gonna come into play. And so we have this lot, which is in a status of open. And again, once we have a successful inspection, this should move into QA release, which will update the system, send notifications out and alert um, the folks at Rootstock that, hey, um, this inspection has passed. You can then carry on with uh, the life cycle of this particular product and get ready for shipment. So let's go through the process of what a QC person might do to complete the inspection. Um, so they're gonna log into the system, they're gonna come here and uh, walk through a variety of different uh, questions, right? So they're measuring the power on, power off timing here. We have an upper and lower spec limit and then there's gonna be an observed value. So I'm gonna just go ahead and put in some observed values here. And uh, in this case, we have a visual inspection. So we're looking to see if the label content location is in the right place. Maybe we use a schematic that's attached to the inspection record, and that's gonna help us understand where it's supposed to be placed um, versus where it is placed on that particular device. So let's go ahead and um, pass this. We're gonna put in some data in here just to make sure that um, everything is indeed gonna pass, and we'll move on to the next phase. Okay, so. Here, I'm gonna put in some values here. And when I'm finished, it should be successful. And we are successful because the inspection result moved to pass. 
So if I just refresh this table right here, we'll get all grade checkboxes. And so here we go. So we have one passed inspection. Again, we'll do this five times. Um, and when I'm finished, all I have to do is come up here and sign off that I've completed this. So here's an electronic signature, okay? And this is designed so that we ensure the authenticity of records and that the person signing off on it is indeed the person who it's supposed to be. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put in a comment here, completed inspection, and put in my password here. And that's gonna trigger a variety of business rules behind the scenes, okay? So behind the scenes, what that's doing is it's saying, all right, so we've successfully completed our inspection. Okay, we have a, a pass result here. And so because of that, um, that's gonna update our material transaction record. So here we have now the inspection is passed, not failed. So that's good. And um, if we come down here and look at the lot, now we have the status from open moving into QA release. So again, these are gonna send out all the notifications, gonna update the proper records and alert the team at uh, Rootstock or managing Rootstock um, that action needs to be taken and we can continue on with the fulfillment process. So at this point, um, I'm not gonna do this five times. I'm gonna pass this back over to uh, David so that we can complete the fulfillment process. Thanks again, everybody. Okay, so we have now gone through, we went through the inspection process. We've got uh, past goods that are now in inventory and ready to be transacted. So as the last step in this, uh, this, this vignette that we're doing today, we're gonna to go through and we're actually gonna process a sales order to sell some of that product. Uh, in this case, we're gonna sell it to a hospital. You see this order here, 151349. I actually have that open in another tab here. A couple of things I just wanted to point out here. Uh, so you see this order, uh, we're gonna sell a quantity of one unit, selling it for $999. And a couple of things that we can do as part of this process. One thing is, in, in a um, using the technology on the platform, on the Salesforce platform, we can have Einstein look at the transactions that we're doing and make recommendations on things that need to be changed or added to those transactions. So for example, one thing we could do here is this particular unit might are often sells with a, an upgraded warranty option. So one of the things we could do here is we could accept that, we could add another line item to this particular sales order here if the customer wants to do that to be able to uh, sell them an extended warranty on this piece of equipment, which generates more revenue for us and obviously gives them more protection for that piece of equipment. But let's, let's go along now. So let's, let's process through this particular unit here that we're selling. So if I come out here to look, do my order fulfillment step, if you notice down here, I can look and I see that I have five units in an inventory. Those are five units that were part of that group or were that group that ran through the inspection process here just a few minutes ago. I can go through a number of processes here to, to pick, pack, ship, and create an invoice. I'm just gonna combine all these together to shorten up and save a couple of minutes of time. So in one step, we're going to allocate that product from inventory. We're gonna pick it, pack it, ship it, and create an invoice. So I'm gonna go ahead and process those lines. So now we'll come down here. Here is our sales invoice. We can approve that invoice. This could all be done as a batch process as well. It certainly can be done individually like we're doing here, or you may have a batch that runs every hour, every evening, something like that, that runs these processes through. But if we wanted to print that invoice, we'll pull up a, uh, a format here for that particular invoice. And then we will, there it is. So there's that particular glucose monitor that's gone out. So what we see now is we've gone all the way from the point that we bought a particular product, we've received it in, we've received multiple quantities of it in, multiple transactions, but we showed you how we took one transaction, we ran it through the quality inspection process, then we created a sales order, shipped it out the door, and now we've invoiced for it. So we'd like to thank you today for taking the time to watch the uh, demonstration. If you would like to request a personal demo, go to rootstock.com demo. Thank you for your time.